Hi Saints, Hello. it's good to see you again. My name is Nick. My name is Daryl. Well, technically you are seeing us instead of us seeing you. Yeah, you know, we, well, we kind of see you in school also, lah. So yeah. <laughs> through that, through that. Mm-hmm. So today we will be actually uh, reading out some of the responses yeah. of the previous chapter, not the one where you see us in the talk show, but the one on the the success ingredient, the quality of success. Mm. Yeah. So for starters, I actually realized that there's this student who mentioned this particular line. What line? It says, "To be driven." driven. Do you agree, not there? Hmm, you see, yeah. I agree. I agree. Why? Eh? If we are not being driven, how am I going to get to work? How am I going to take the bus? How am I going to take the grab? Are we just at home? Of course, unless I drive, lah. Then different story, um, right? Uh, yeah, lah. But because, because, right? If you are not driven, then you get to uh. work from home. True that, true that. So, I, I would prefer not to be driven so I can work from home, you know. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, thank you for tolerating our nonsense, especially last week's uh, joke with Cynic. Right? <laughs> well, okay, okay. it's not really a joke, right? Because I'm uh, quite Cynic. Uh, sure, if you guys agree with him, sure, okay. Okay, um, okay what? Uh, to be driven, I think, mean, seriously, in all seriousness, Um, I think it's true. Really, the ingredient to our success is you have to be driven. And mm. I, I read some of your responses. You said that uh, one of the ingredients which I think has to relate to driven is your passion. You know, mm. when we do the things we like, we do the things we enjoy. You'll definitely be motivated to do even better. Yeah. For example, like uh, I will come from a media background a bit, so uh, I have a passion in. Uh, cameras and uh, sound system and stuff like that. So yeah, I believe and I enjoy doing it. So yeah, I agree. Passion is definitely helps us to dr- be driven. But so far, it does have not pr- provided me a car lah. So <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to be <laughs> driven. We are working from home right now, yes, like yes. now. Yes. But I do agree. Passion is definitely important. <laughs> you know, it's also semi like linked to you know happiness. Mm. Um, when we are doing something we like. Uh, for example, maybe for you, uh, editing videos. Then when yes, you're editing, yes. you are very happy. You know, I then so if you too. have the passion there to do, and you don't feel that it's work, work. Mm. If, if you get what I mean. Second, I actually realized one more important factor, or rather quality that majority agree on, is actually resilience and mm. perseverance, determination. I mean, in a way, interchangeable are the words. Mm. But of course, we have to keep striving on. If not, uh, you see, ah. Uh, I just walk out 2.4 ah uh, example 2.4 all guys need to do it actually even girls right nafa test yeah so the PE teacher asks us to run six rounds so I start on the first round I walk I tire already then I give up then like that I would never be able to complete the six round right correct yeah so definitely we need to persevere on yes yep yeah lah if you don't persevere you will never get to where you want ah. Mm. So I think when you persevere, when you are resilient, you are you are striving towards it. When you're faced with adversities, that's where you grow. Exactly, exactly. and you know what? Mm. Perseverance is also very important. Yeah. If you are going after someone, ah, uh, wow! I tell you, if you don't have that, you just go up and say hi, but the person never say hi back. Then you sad and you walk away. That's it. No chance. <laughs> right? Why you giving relationship tip now? <laughs> Um, <coughs> maybe giving you or someone. <coughs> um, um, yep. If you all need uh, tips, to, uh, go and find it personally. Okay, not here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Next point. Okay, next point. Uh, the next thing that one of your, some of your shared is uh, integrity and honesty. Uh, which I think is quite uh, true when it comes to working. When it comes to being successful, you want to do it with honest means and not uh, underhanded, uh, you know, pirated kind of measures. But uh, you want to do it with uh, a true, true to yourself, true to everybody, and that's where people will admire you better. Yeah, it's not so that people wouldn't say that in hey, you are you did it by a you did it cheating, you did it by cheating, or you did it by your own uh, underhanded means. But you true to yourself. And I was re- I remember watching one of the show, one of the drama, and uh, I don't know I forgot what show is it. And the father, who is a cleaner, you know, that's a cleaner. I was talking to the son, and he was just sharing that um, when you work, uh, if you work your hardest, you know, everybody will see it. People will see your success. Uh, even if nobody sees it, you yourself know that you work hard for it, and you 
deserve what you what you have gotten, and nobody can prove otherwise. Which I think that is very true when you have integrity, when it comes to uh, working, or uh, when it comes to your successes, people will realize it, and you yourself realize it, and that's the most important, lah. Yeah. So I actually realized, Daryl, mm. there is this part on love that mm. one one of okay, not really one, but some students mentioned. I do agree. Mm. If without love, right, when we climb the corporate ladder. Would you prefer to work under some loving boss or a cold boss? I prefer a loving boss. Exactly right. Some of we really show genuine love and concern. Yeah. You know, not maybe not the BGR kind of love, but mm. really the the love and, and respect. Uh, I think that's also a good word. You know, for each other, for co-workers, yep. for peers, yeah. and even for bosses. Mm. And especially, I mean. Even for cleaners and people who you know people deem not so high level, those are very important. Yeah, I, I believe so. Especially when you show respect and you show a certain honor to the people around you, people will also honor you back and uh, mm. respect you for who you are. Because you are not just uh, working for the sake of getting job done, but you are working together as a team. Yeah, mm. definitely. Yes. So I think that's enough responses from us today. Yeah. We will let you see us again, or rather, maybe see you in school. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Send it out. Bye. See you guys. Good morning, Saints. How has phase two of school reopening been for you so far? I hope that the experience has been a positive one. Well, thank you for all of your responses that you have given to us from the last chapel session regarding what is the one quality in your life that is essential for your success. We, the chaplaincy team, have been so encouraged to read so many of your responses. And I'm so confident that all of these qualities will help you succeed in your life very much if you can keep to it. But this morning, I want to take our chapel session in another direction. What if we fail to meet the standards that we set for ourselves in terms of the one quality of success? How would we feel? And you know what? This experience is by no means unique. If you're honest with yourself, all of you would have faced this feeling of disappointment when you fail to meet your own expectations. And this feeling is none other than regret. Just listen to what one of your students has shared with us in the chapel session. Please help me stop living in the mistakes I made in the past. In other words, please help me stop living in regret. So this morning, I want to start with this question. What is the one regret in your life that you have experienced that has impacted you a lot? The dictionary defines regret as a feeling of sadness about something wrong that you have done or something that you have failed to do and wishing that it could have been different and better. And this feeling can be a very powerful one that affects you very much. For me, one of the greatest regrets that I have experienced was something I failed to do. A few years ago, I struck up a conversation with an auntie in a hawker center who was selling fruit juice. We used to patronize the hawker center very often, and she would know exactly what my family and I would like to order. And so, in one of the times when I was speaking with her, she shared with me 
of her personal struggles. And in particular, she shared with me about her husband who was struck down with terminal illness and was resting at home. And upon learning that I was studying to be a pastor, she invited me to her home to encourage him and to pray for him. As that time was near Chinese New Year and her store would be closed for a few days, that was the perfect time to meet. We arranged that I would visit her house on the third day of Chinese New Year. And at the Chinese New Year, my family and I had much visitations to do and we ended up feeling very tired. And so I decided that I would give the visitation a miss and try to visit that family on another day. So the following weekend, when the Hawker Center reopened for business, I went to her store to check with her how was she and to arrange another time to visit. But this time, her demeanor to me had changed. It was a mixture of sadness and hostility. She said to me, my husband passed away last week on the fourth day of Chinese New Year. Where were you? Why did you not visit us on the third day? We were all expecting you. I was so shocked to hear what she had said that I didn't know what to reply. I could only murmur and stammer how sorry I am to have heard the news and how sorry I was to not have visited her and her family to pray for them. From then on, she refused to accept my orders and would ignore me whenever I visit that hawker center. And I can't say that I blame her. I have let her and her family down. What was an opportunity to pray to encourage her family and to even form further friendships with them was destroyed because I had not kept to my word. Well, the immediate consequences were negative. I felt very sorry for myself for some time, and it was a very terrible feeling. But after some time, this experience taught me something positive as well. It taught me that the opportunities that God has given me for friendships with others are rare and precious, and I should treasure these opportunities a lot. And there is always something that I can do to encourage another person. And I never know how much of a help I can be, even though it may seem little to me. This is not because of how great I am, but because of how loving God is to work through people like you and me. So I've learned from this experience to treasure all of such opportunities and to keep to my word. Some good has come out of it. This regret over something that I have not done has propelled me to be more aware, disciplined, and responsible. Not that I don't struggle with the feelings of regret anymore, but I know that they have helped me to become better. Yet regrets can also be not just due to something that we have not done, but also something that we have done that have hurt others, and in some cases, have hurt others very deeply. Some of these hurts can be so great that they are hard to forget. What can we do about such regrets? Let's listen to what this person has to say. My name is Parti Emmanuel, and I participated in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. I murdered many Tutsi under the order of bad leadership and have spent six years in prison and four years in community service. While in prison, fellow prisoners invited me to try Alpha. I went but struggled to engage. I realized I needed to tell the truth about what I had done and wrote a letter asking for forgiveness of the relatives of those I had murdered. Life was so hard after being released from prison. I found my wife with two children that were not mine and I faced many heartbreaking situations. I didn't know how I was going to live with the genocide survivors after what I had done. 
My heart was filled with agony, loneliness, and fear. Encouraged by Alpha in prison, I decided to do Alpha again. I learned that Jesus forgives and experienced love in a way I had never known before. With the help of a local pastor, I went to find Vincent, whose mother and grandmother I had killed, to ask for forgiveness. I now live in a village built for genocide survivors and perpetrators. Vincent lives in the same village. We have formed a friendship and I now experience peace like I haven't experienced it before. Day-to-day -day life continues to be a challenge, but I have found forgiveness and healing for the things that I have done. As you have heard from Parity, no mistake is too great for God not to forgive, nor to restore. You may still face or suffer from the consequences of your actions, but you can face it now with hope that God can make something better to come out of your experiences. All you need to do, like Pariti did, is to pray for God's forgiveness for your wrongs, and you can experience the same peace that he has experienced. So today, if you both experience regret for something you have not done or something you have done, then you need both God's strength to help you become better or you need God's forgiveness for the wrongs that you have committed. And if you are such a person, I invite you to pray with me this simple prayer to God who hears all of our prayers. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you are both powerful and merciful. You fully understand the regrets that we struggle deep in our hearts. Regrets that only we know and no one else knows, but you know. For the things that we have failed to do, give us strength so that we can become better people and we can learn from such mistakes or failings. For the things and the wrongs that we have done, please forgive us and help us seek forgiveness from the ones whom we have wronged. Give us peace and strength in our heart. And we thank you for your promise that you are able to make all things work for good in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, friends, Thank you for participating and listening in today's chapel session. I hope that it has been a blessing for you. Please respond by filling in in this QR code. What is one thing that you have learned that you can put in practice about dealing with the regrets in your life? And also, please feel free to share with us if you do struggle with any regret so that we can pray with you or feel free to share with someone you are comfortable to share with. Please don't ever struggle with regrets alone. Have a blessed day ahead, and God bless you.